First question, it's a simple one. How are you and how are you doing? I'm okay. Um, it's one of those days on tour where you just get kind of, you get a little annoyed because so much, like everything's changed, no one knows what's going on, we moved the venue, you're in the van for six hours. Well, I'm good. And then uh, starting tomorrow, we have um, a couple of weeks off, actually. My, my dad has a place in, in uh, Marque. Marque. Oh, that's so, uh, nice. yeah, no, it's all good. It's all good. I'm, uh, you know. You're enjoying I'm enjoying, <laughs> and after this tour, there's no schedule, and it's time to get creative and write new music again, which it's been a long time, so I'm excited for that. All right. How many times have you been to Italy? What, what number? Um, three. Three times. Okay. Well, I've been here a bunch, um, but as far as touring, we, we did an Italian tour last June, mm -hmm. and we played again in August, last August, and then we're back now. So. Do you know any part of your family that still lives here, or...? I don't. My uh, my dad was going to go to Salerno to try okay. to find some people. Oh, all right. But my stepmom, through Facebook, actually reconnected with her relatives here and in wow. in Marque. Okay. So that's why they have the house there. How did you start making music? I got a guitar on it for Christmas when I was probably twelve. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really have any intent behind it. I was just kind of like, oh yeah, I should just ask for that for gift. And I didn't really know why or what I wanted to do with it. So I kind of, I didn't really know, even really know how to hold it properly. Mm -hmm. But then I just got into it. I, like, I started, you know, teaching myself like three chord punk songs and stuff. Okay. And then- uh, So you did I, all by yourself? Yeah, pretty much. I took two lessons in my life, and then I realized that all they were teaching me was like Green Day songs that I could look up on the internet. Um, Not Beatles songs. No, no, like really simple. All right. Like I would go to the local music store and spend like 45 minutes a guy showing me something that mm -hmm. I discovered tabs on the internet, and then I just, it was irrelevant after that. Okay. You know, I'm not, I'm, I was never really even that interested in becoming like a musician musician i think i just wanted to write songs and, and be creative so mm -hmm. so it so. started as an hobby and when did it became uh, a serious thing for you the last time i had another job was it's probably like seven years ago okay. um, because i was working at a restaurant mm -hmm. and i was really just terrible i was a bus boy and i was just terrible at the job instead of firing me the guy that owned the place, he said, hey, I have an idea. Why don't you start playing music on the weekends at the restaurant? I had, I mean, he, he's like wanting to play for three or four hours like on the weekend. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. If anything's better than this. So I, I put together like a book of covers and just like my own songs. And I would just kind of like play in the corner of this like really crowded stuffy room. It was really strange, but like starting then I kind of never, I kind of decided that I was just going to... And I was in bands Friday. at the time, but I wasn't making a living off of my bands. Mm -hmm. But then I got to a point where I was like, I think I can make a living off of this, just doing stuff like this. And now I've been able to combine both, where I can make a living off of like my, you know, yeah. my stuff. And yeah. were your parents always supportive of your career, or did they ever tell you, well, just put it as an hobby? My mom has always been, you know, like, always down, always supportive. My dad was a little bit more, it took him a lot longer to get on board with it. I think he was like fully in, like about three years ago when he kind of saw like that, you know, That's I was able to start doing happening. some cool things. And uh, after that, it was like the validation that he needed to be like, all right, all right. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have to uh, suggest that I, you know, put together a resume or like take a job at his office okay. or something so I think that the best musicians are first of all avid listeners and I think you are one so can you tell me which records helped develop your love for music oh man first like from the beginning yeah um the first record that popped in my head was Grace by Jeff Buckley, mm -hmm. which is an album that I always go back to, and it's an album that I 
every time I listen to it, it's like the first, it never gets old. It actually just gets better with time. And I think that speaks to my love for just the human voice and just the way that he used it. And, and also the diversity of genre on that record. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't really subscribe to genre and that's something that I really identify with. So um, human voice and not being able to put into a box are like things that, something about that, I, it never gets old okay. for me. Uh, that was the first thing that came to mind. I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff, but. But that's the one. You said, <laughs> you said gut reaction, that's it. <laughs> and you said that Stardust birthday party is like you dancing while destroying your older self. It's more like detangling yourself from, uh, you know, all the things that you've kind of been told or been told to think your whole life, you know, the way that you're raised and socially, school, all these things. I mean, you're, you're molded, like you're, your whole life is kind of spent like being molded into something very mm -hmm. specific. But as I've gotten older, I kind of realized those things are just kind of very limiting. You kind of have to like detangle yourself from all that, you know, you're always told like things are supposed to be this way or do this or go this, take this road, take this path. And then you find out like none of that's real and you're supposed to just kind of like be you and do things your way and how you want to do them and express yourself however you want, whatever is your, is your truth. Because there is no one single defining one, but we're kind of like told that there is in a way. And so that's kind of what it's about. It's kind of getting to like the core of it all and letting go of all of that stuff that has molded you and therefore like limited you. It's like a step towards being so more not, free, not I guess. Being, being more, yourself. yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. In the album, there are a couple of questions in the title of your songs. Yeah. So, since there are no explicit answers in the lyrics of the songs, I'm going to use them in this interview. Okay. So, who are you right now? I don't know. I would just say <laughs> not nothing, really. No. Nothing. <laughs> That's not an answer. <laughs> it's actually the right answer, but uh, no. Um, I am the universe experiencing itself wow. through, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. and we all are, through a character named Ron Gallo. And Ron Gallo, the character at the moment, is a touring musician at a weird, strange, pivotal point in his career where he feels like he's wanting to go somewhere completely different, but has been doing something for the last few years and wants to kind of like break down and rebuild and evolve. And it's feeling like it's this, this painful, but kind of beautiful transitional process. So that's the best answer I can give. That's an awesome one. <laughs> and do you like your own company? But I guess not, given that you answered nothing at the beginning. Well, I mean, nothing in a good way. You know, like when you're, when you like strip it all away, you know, you're just kind of like a thing that's experiencing <laughs> stuff. And we all are that same thing. So I mean nothing in a good way. But I do, I, I do. I, I like my own company more now than ever. Uh, and that's like a recent thing for me over the last few years. Like I learned to like it. Because mm -hmm. I think f for so long I always hide behind other people. I can never like sit by myself. I'm very oh, frantic sure. and I have a lot of energy. And I'm like, you know, a friend of mine described me as like, an, like cutting an electrical wire. Mm -hmm. like, that's just kind of like like a live wire. I'm all over the place, but I've I've learned how to sit still a little bit more, and and I've I've been able to like have alone time and be able to deal with that. So yes, I think more now than ever. So you've stopped thinking that you are the problem. In the same time. Y yeah. I, well, no, no. If I have any, the, the thing is, if I have any problems, it's because of me. It's about my unwillingness to accept what is happening to me. So therefore, if there's a problem in my life, it's always my fault. I know that that's a lot to deal with because, you know, if like someone comes up to me right now and like hits me over the head with a baseball bat, it's not your fault. that's not an <laughs> ideal situation. But like, I can't control that they did that, but I can choose how I react to it, mm. you know? So it's kind of like, it's this weird responsibility. Okay. But, and I, I, you know, I struggle mentally and emotionally all the time and get in my head and I'm like, totally over analytical and I overthink everything and it drives me crazy and probably the people around me and that's it like none of that's real so it's all just me so I, I am constantly the only problem in my life yes okay. forever uh, you've written a um, 
tribute to John Coltrane, to a Love Supreme. Is that a so, tribute or? A... Uh, I mean, in the title, it's kind of like a little nod because um, the title of the song, but there's not really anything musical or like direct reference to him besides just like the title as a as an homage. Because it, it gave you something that record or. A... Yeah, it was actually the documentary that I watched, Chasing Train, and I always loved his music. Uh, I'm a big, I'm big into jazz, but I didn't really know a lot about him. And then I watched that movie, and I was kind of blown away by like the place and just in which he created from, and what drove him, and how he viewed music, and then kind of weave that in my own little way in that song. Yeah. What do you think your next album will be about? Do you have an idea or, or not? I'm trying to figure that out now, but the thing that I'm starting to dial in on is that I have spent a lot of time writing songs about like my observation, the outside world, mm -hmm. universal things and problems and other people, and I think it's like finally time to, to, to look at myself and write about like my own experiences and my own feelings, thoughts, emotions, and like do that in a universal way. Um, to actually like get personal, maybe, which is not something I've something I've always avoided. But I'm like excited and scared for that. I think. So um, you think you'll you'll be less ironic, or will you be yourself talking about yourself in the same way, but dealing more hmm. with yourself? Probably in the same way. I think humor is kind of an inevitable part of it for me, but. Um, just not being afraid anymore. Not mm -hmm. not being afraid of like looking at myself, talking about my own stuff, being vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, and also not being afraid to just make the music that I want to hear and make the like not be restricted to. You know, people really like this one song, and they come to show the show to hear this one song mm -hmm. and this electric guitar and these bass and these drums and this loud chaotic thing to not care about any of that, to just like not be afraid to make, you know, if I want to make a trap song, I'm going to make a trap song. If I want to make what I, whatever you like. Yeah. And I feel like if I do that, it's, it's taken off a limiter and not me being afraid in any way on every level. And something about that will be the best thing I've done. Maybe. I read that you hate when uh, music journalists and bloggers define you as similar to or sounds like that artist which comparison pissed you off the most i just don't generally like that because it's always through like someone's very limited scope mm -hmm. you know um especially in like the world of rock music like people's reference points for it are like the black keys for example okay like I'm really not crazy, but I don't really like that. I mean, I, maybe it's some of their older stuff, like many, many years ago. Like, but, but I just feel like maybe me and that band are pulling from the same influences, but then it gets like it stops there for people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like sometimes I struggle with like those kinds of things. Like, you don't like being defined by just that, like that, like the black keys. Or yeah, or like revivalist rock stuff. Okay. Because, because you don't feel like you're a revivalist. No, I don't. I don't, and I like have no interest in reviving anything. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like to be, you know, like stuck in the '60s or '70s and trying to like, just. It's 2019. Like I don't want to be stuck in kind of trying to create this like vintage throwback thing, talking about like trains and like I don't know these like tropes of like, mm -hmm. you know of older music like I like that stuff but I just I don't like the comparison to old stuff because it's now you know and people always do what they want to do but I, I uh, you know it's just like it's just kind of missing the mark I guess but that's just you know that's part of it it's like when you make something people are allowed to think whatever they want about it so you kind of got to let go a little bit um, But yeah, the, like the rock and roll revival shit is like the thing I'm like, I'm not interested in that because <laughs> right. I don't even know what's going to happen after this record. So like, mm -hmm. no, who knows? Do you recommend me three other emerging artists that you reckon worthy of being listened gingerly? Yes. Uh, Yellow Days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Young British kid. Soulful. Great guitar. Guitar shit. So good. Um, 
You said emerging, so like not really that well known. Okay. Uh, it's rapper No Name from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say Post Animal, actually, our friends. We just did a tour with. Yeah. Those are my, the first three that came to mind. All like, that's pretty wide spectrum of music, so. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Did I do okay? Is it all right? You did great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Of course.